Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new project, again, sponsored by PCBWay. This one's gonna involve PCBs, lots of switches, lots of resistors, something like this, that, that, and even that. Now, why would I fill the screen with so much stuff? Well, let me start again and tell you. Some time ago, I built a decade resistor box using these dip switches. Now it worked pretty well, but there was a problem. Well, there were a few problems. One of them is that switching these things is not as intuitive or easy as I would have liked it to be. These are incredibly small, my fingers are big. And the other reason is that uh, whether it's the quality or just uh, the nature of the beast, these things start creating a bit of resistance between the pins after a while. Probably some sort of internal tarnish, but the point is, especially at very low resistances, you get sporadic readings. Not that often, but enough to be a bother. So I decided to do something different and go with this type of switch. Now this is the type of switch that I would have wanted anyway, but the problem was they were incredibly expensive. At the time I looked up the pricing on these switches and they were like 20 bucks each. Now, considering that you might want a decade resistor box with about nine ranges, well, that gets a bit expensive. So I went with these, but I've now found these guys on AliExpress for about 10 bucks for 12, I think it was. So less than $1 each or less than one euro each. And that is good enough for me. I wasn't expecting too much. I thought the quality would be really shoddy, but when these things arrived, I did some testing and I was really surprised. The other advantage with this type of switch, because it's open, you can very easily clean the contacts. Spray a bit of contact cleaning on there and you're good to go. So I decided to redo this with all these switches. I'm going to put a link to this uh, in the description below if you want to get some yourself. I then went ahead and uh, designed and ordered the boards and uh, I've done them in modules of three. I've got 10 boards. I've used one of them already for that small one. But the reason I did these smaller, they're all identical, is because I wanted to make this in groups of three so that I can use, for example, one for um, one ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm. And by the way, in the final version that I'm sharing on PCBWay's website, I've taken the ohm out of there because I want this to be zero to nine, or it's actually one to nine, 10 to 100, or 10 to 90, and 100 to 900. Now it can be ohms, it can be K, it can be meg. So if you want to build one of these, what you'll end up with is this thing. So this uses a single board and I've got one ohms, 10 ohms, 100 ohm resistors. All these resistors are one watts. So this can handle quite a bit of power. And I've made uh, provision for these holes here so that you use it just like that. And the thing about this project that I wanted to do was to make all the 3D printable uh, elements available as well. So I'm going to be providing the uh, STL, the model files for the enclosure, for the labeling and for the knob, because uh, I wanted to have knobs like this, which had zeros on both ends. And the reason is the switch that I've got is 11 position. So I've actually got two zeros, both this end and the other end are at zero. So if I am at uh, say eight and I want to put this to zero because I want to go up over there. I don't have to go all the way down to one and zero. I just go across and put it to zero on that one. It makes it a lot easier and I like it this way. So this is the small version, but then I've made a big version, which is this guy over here, that allows you to put three of these modules in series, inside obviously. And that means you can have uh, one ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm, 1K, 10K, 100K, one meg, 10K, uh, 10 meg, 100 meg if you want to go that far, which I don't really want to, but the way I've designed this enclosure, which I'm also going to provide if you want to 3D print it yourself, is it's set up to receive three of these boards perfectly in those little indents over there. So it definitely won't rattle. And when you bolt the switches to the front, it obviously holds everything perfectly. I'm not going to be doing the full range. I'm going to be doing it up to the one meg steps. And to label this, I've created, again, 3D printed. And again, I'm going to be sharing this, this little label sheet, which you print separately. And the reason was I don't want to waste a lot of uh, the enclosures if I wanted to change something. 
And the way I've done it here is I've just printed what I'm going to use. The bottom row, the middle row, and the top. I'm just going to use the one meg range, although the enclosure has the holes for the others as well. And of course, this has got a lid as well. So the models for all of these, I'm going to make them downloadable for you if you want to print them yourself. The PCBs were sponsored by PCBWay, and I'm putting them up on the share section of the PCBWay website. Links will be down below as well, so you can order them if you like. The GURB is also downloadable. There will be a bomb as well, a bill of materials, so I'm going to list this probably on the Google Drive to tell you exactly which resistors I've used. These are all 1 watt resistors, all bought from Mauser. I'll put the references to them if you want to buy them yourself. Now, the reason I'm providing as much information as I can and all the 3D printable stuff here as well is that I sometimes have a problem trying to respond to everybody. I want to make these uh, projects as self-contained, as self-explanatory as possible, so you can go ahead and do them yourself. Because sometimes when you ask questions, I just don't have the time to answer them all. And I don't like keeping people waiting. But I think that uh, the way the information is uh, provided for something as simple as this, you probably won't, will not need much input from me anyway. The important thing is the switches. Because uh, what I've used is one pole, 11 position switches. And that is what the board is designed for. Now what I'm going to do now is build up three of these, put them onto the big enclosure, and uh, close it all up, show you how that works, and then we'll test it. All right, one step further. This is the uh, first row, second row, the last one I haven't uh, put in yet. But these are the 1 ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm. This is 1K, 10K, 100K. Now these resistors are all 1 watt resistors, although some of them do seem smaller which is a little bit strange, but they are indeed 1 watt. And on the bomb that I'm making available, the bill of materials, I've got the actual references that I ordered from Mauser. And, um, okay, now, what else have I got? I've got this last one, and I do have the 10 meg, and I've actually found 100 meg resistors, which are in order. So when they arrive, I'll probably populate this just to make it complete. But for now, I'm putting it in like this. Now, the reason I didn't put this in is there's something I need to mention here. And that is, to fit this in there, there's a little tab on here. See that? You need to bend it out. It's very simple. You just straighten it out. And then this thing just fits like that. Nope, wrong way. There's little um, protrusions that are sticking out there that fit onto the board. So it holds the board nicely there. And now all I need to do is put the nut on here. There's a washer and the nut. Okay, now, as you can tell, this is almost done. And when I get the other resistors, I'll probably just make a new faceplate with another hole on here and another range, and we're good to go. I didn't put my logo on here. I guess my ego is uh, coming under control. Right now, the knobs. I've got nine knobs over here. And these knobs were made specifically for this. It took quite a bit of testing to get the right um, hole in there. This is a friction fit. And all I need to do now is I need to put this down to zero. In fact, I'll put them all down to zero on the counterclockwise position. And now I take this thing, let's start up here. It's the other way. So I I align the zero on the on the knob with the zero at the top there and just push it in. And it's pretty good. I'll just do the rest and we'll have this whole faceplate done. Okay, good. They're all on zeros. If I want to put in um, 89k, 89.898k, that's it. <laughs> that's brilliant. That works. 
And I'm glad I put these um, double zeros because if you're on here and you want to go to zero, you can either go back that way, which is a bit further, or you just go to the right. And I'll show up the schematic and I'm going to make the schematic available as well for download. But you'll see that both the 1 and the 11 position uh, positions are actually on zero. And now we need to just wire this up. And the way I do that is I'm using this one here. No, actually, I want to use this one. I want to use this one. Doesn't make any difference, does it? You can. You need to connect these in series. So I've got this guy over here, which is going to connect to this uh, socket, banana socket. And now this is the end of that one over here. I need to remove that guy. Which one am I going to use? I'll probably use, yeah, I'll use this one. I'll use this one. So I'll remove that guy and this one. This one is going to wire to there. It just needs to be in series. It doesn't make any difference. So that one wires to there, that one wires to there, and then that one comes down to the uh, to the other banana socket that I'm going to put on here. And I had to space this very carefully so these holes actually come through the middle here so that the banana socket can fit in there quite nicely. I'll do that, show you the result. All the wiring is now done. I had to short these two out because I haven't got these in place. Otherwise, you have an open circuit. But there we go. And, <laughs> yeah, I uh, realized I made a mistake with the knobs. Watch this. I'm on full left, and I want to go to 1, which is clockwise, right? It gives me 9. I put the numbers the other way around, so I have to reprint them all. Oh, well. That's uh, the good thing about having a printer at home. <laughs> well, that's been redone, and <laughs> my ego's back. Okay, now the switches work. That was really dumb, because now I've got all these guys to dump into the rubbish bin. That goes off as well. And quite a few of these other little attempts, when you're doing 3D printing, you do a lot of prototyping. So, this is complete. Just put the lid on. There you go. And how good is this? Well, let's do a few tests, see what we're getting here. All right, let's do some testing. Let's see if I choose 5 ohms. That's pretty good. I had about that in uh, lead resistance. Let's put this down to 0. Let's go to something a little bit higher, like 20 ohms. Pretty good. 100 ohm range, I've got it on 3, so 300. Yep. The 1K, put that arbitrarily to 4, 4K, that's damn close. The 10K range, what is that on 30? That is on 60. Okay, let's try 360. Ha! Let's try 3.36 meg, or rather 1.36 meg. 3.36 meg. That is pretty, pretty decent, actually. Put that one to zero. Bring that to zero. We're on 3 meg. The meg range is pretty good. And as you can tell from the logo that I put on here, I've been thinking about it. I don't think I'll ever need, you know, the 10, the 10 times uh, meg range. But if I do, I can always change my mind. So this thing's working pretty well. So let's say... Take that down, let's say we want 320, 320k, that was on the other side. There we go, 320k, 320, 323, 323.3, is that right? Okay, yeah. Once you get to the higher ranges, some of the slight errors start um, overshadowing the lower value, so... Obviously, that wouldn't be something you'd use, but back to zero. I think this works pretty well. I like it. And that, folks, is it. This is the new project. And um, as I mentioned, I'm going to make everything available. The boards will be on PCB Way. Links are below. The uh, Gerbers you can download from there as well, as uh, you can do with the schematic and the bomb. The 3D printable uh, files including the Fusion files, so you can make alterations. I'll put that in a folder, and I'll put the link to, the, uh, to that folder in my Google Drive down in the description. So, 
I've got a tool that I need. If you need one, go ahead, have fun. I do hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. If you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now. And most of all, stay safe.